Hi Tom, today is January the 11th, 2021 and we just want to ask you a few questions and maybe get a little bit of information um, about what it was like being uh, born and raised here in the county of Halifax or Warren County as a Halawa Saponi Native American. So can you take it from there and give us a little bit of information about yourself? Well, I was born January 24th, 1929 and uh, and going back to my first remembrances, growing up in this community here, we weren't that really uh, uh, aware of our Indianness, but uh, well, really uh, didn't hear because different families had different Indian heritage in the community, and uh, they were all blanketed into the uh, Indian tribe, Halavas, Pony, Halifax, and Warren County. And so look, this so uh, much I, I didn't as a child growing up uh, uh, was pretty aware uh, of my Indianness until I became a teenager. Yeah, and how did they, how did you find out though? Yeah, well because uh, Chief W R Richardson, uh, when he came in, he was in Richmond and he came back and he uh, uh, started. And he was elected to this, but before, now to pick up all of this stuff before uh, Livonia has picked up this stuff from the beginning because she was here with all of it that has unfolded totally. Mm -hmm. But I personally never come into the uh, into the picture until I was uh, there, and uh, so. The, uh, uh, the thing I think it might be appropriate for me to disclose on tape is, is that uh, uh, as a growing up, the only know my family uh, and our Indian community, uh, we, uh, we walked to school. Apartheid was, was fully enforced. Yeah. And so we walked to school as an Indian we had to walk to school, and the, and the white people uh, rode the buses. And as growing up underneath that which prevailed, that I want to, I, I think is, and, and, I, I, uh, and the whole thing is how the American Indian was treated, and I was part of that, which enveloped me that the person I am today. You see what I mean? So this way here, uh, in the community here where some people were mixed Indians and stuff like that with white that was separated because of married of color mm -hmm. and so if you're going to put down a history of things of the, of the coexistence of American Indians mm -hmm. growing up in a white w w uh, world that the white people had come in and uh, now you're on the on the neat their jurisdiction and everything. In fact, the Indian people were given white people's names mm -hmm. from England. Yeah. So uh, this Which is how we became Richardson, correct? My name is Masadia Thomas Richardson. And uh, I grew up in uh, this community here, uh, the community of the Indian tribe. And uh, I wasn't aware that we were Indian. The only thing I knew we were people of color and I, I lived here uh, for nine years old when my parents moved away to New York in 1938-1939. So I, I knew little of my own Indian heritage until later on uh, after World War II. And I, I, I volunteered to get into the service at 17 years old right just before World War II ended, so I became a World War II veteran. So then, when I was discharged in 1945, 49, uh, I uh, picked up my relationship to my people in North Carolina, and there's where I began to learn more about my own Indian heritage and uh, how come we were part of the people due to apartheid at that particular time existed that visiting my family and we were p 
people of color. So, and I remember one little time a little boy, a white boy, asked me, because I, I was fair complected and things like that, he says, are you white or colored? Because in those days, either you were colored or either you were Negro or black. So, they, and then there was white, so you had a, a mixture of three colors. And when I was growing up, so after thir 1938, I'm nine years old in New York, I, I had, we were big, with so many racial people there and things like from all over the world, I never even heard much about our, what was going on in my place of birth in North Carolina. And my grandfather was, on, was an Indian man. He passed away, but I didn't, I didn't know no difference between what is it. But I, and I got out of service when I'm 20 years old, uh, serving in Japan and stuff. Then that's when I began to learn about my own Indian heritage. And then that's when I learned that our Chief W.R. Richardson and the community, they had really been through quite a bit of get together in private to get the Indian people in the community separated and to, in an effort to separate because of this apartheid and have our own school so that we could practice our culture, which I knew little about uh, prior to that time of being uh, 20 years old, now in 1949 and 50. Simultaneously, uh, Chief W.R. Richardson, they were already forming this, talking, and they finally come, that's when I've learned more about my Indian heritage. So probably before I went to service, I, I, I had some idea that would be Indian Harris, but it, to me it was no no big deal or whatnot, you know. So those those are the things too that uh, that come into uh, me uh, getting involved to who that I was racially speaking. Right, but tell me what they told you. Huh? Tell me what they told you. They, I was told that they there was some people from the. Uh, uh, Cherokee, North Carolina, that they came in and they were checking with the remnant Indian people to relocate them to Cherokee. So that this way here, uh, that the Indian people, but because uh, many of my uh, relatives, uh, they had already bought land and the white man that had sold them land and everything else like that, it was did it to them. And some family members had been owning the land in 30 or 50 years. Uh, in the community, they own the land. So they're not about to up put and go over there. But the point being is, is that that was the, f that I learned that later on in my life. My ancestors told me about that. My mom and uh, things like that. So these are the former things too. That, that I learned later on in life, mm -hmm. because a nine-year-old when I come, but only after I'm out of service. But meanwhile, while I'm away, all of this is is going on. And and Chief W. R. Richardson, and he was the one that helped the form. Oh my gosh, I'm dead. And then the the, the Indian uh, remnant people from different tribes that have found found together here because. Because at 1910, they tried to get people, and some of the people they said, I'm no Indian, and so they left them here. Because some of them went off and hid. Because there was that effort to get all the Indian people out. Is that what, is that what they call uh, the Trail of Tears? The no, the Trail of Tears uh, uh, come before that. Oh, okay. So now they're trying to clean the carpet clean uh -huh. everything up and get all the remnant ones out. Ah. But now, emerging all through these uh, of the United States, you got different people that were Indians, and we got them here, people they don't know nothing about tribal stuff. Mm -hmm. But the Indian heritage is being assimilated into oh, what? People of color. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and to identify our tribe, we come up with the name Halifax and Warren County Soponi. Halawa Saponi Indian tribe, which was being formed of remnant heritage 
tribes. Right. And again, this didn't, you didn't learn all about this until you came back from the service, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. I really didn't, uh, because my mom mm -hmm. taught, taught me, she taught me this, some of this stuff, you yeah. know, when growing up, mm -hmm. but it didn't make no, no, no much, much. Okay, it was curious, you said something about, you served in the service, what did you do in the service? I was a paratrooper, <laughs> you were a paratrooper. and, and oh. a regular soldier and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and then I became a, a military policeman, and uh, and then 1949, from 1946, uh, uh, seven, oh, eight, and I got discharged in 1949 in June. So I served, I served two and a half years, but I got, I didn't take no vacation. So that was, you know, uh, 30 days every year. So for a while you moved away from North Carolina. What happened? Tell me, well, this, tell I me did, a little I bit did, about that. Well, because of the apartheid that existed, my mom and dad and many of our Indian people, they just just went out and got good jobs, got good educations and everything else away from apartheid country, mm -hmm. which, you know, a lot of that, even in the big cities in it, but if you could do the job well, you got, you got this job. But there was no integration, you know what I mean? I mean, after you came back from also, and that's very interesting, because I think you you mentioned earlier on that you moved up to, uh, your family moved to New York? Right. Okay. And then it was from New York that you actually went into the service? Yeah, well, New York. So you we spent, lived in, 19, mm -hmm. from 1938 until 1955, I was a citizen of New York City. Okay. And then at that time... In the latter part, around November, I moved to California, mm -hmm. and that's where I got married and started a family and everything else like that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, oh, okay, so California. Uh, how long were you in California? I know you started your family in California. How long were 1955 you 1955 until, until uh, 2011. Okay, but you came back for a little short time in 1984, was that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, when I retired in 1984, then I prepared uh, to come back. And so well, I came back in uh, June or July of 1984 to uh, North Carolina, and I came back to, to give a volunteer for my tribe. And uh, we were here uh, for... Not just a good full year, a little over a year, we were here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, many of the tribal people didn't know me and stuff like that. And I had family in California. I became a grandfather when, and at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so things, uh, so I went back to California. And then I worked as a lineman for the Department of Water Power and, 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 and all the things that developed with the family, developing and everything else. And when I retired, in uh, 1984, then I, I came back to North Carolina. After you retired in 1984, you came back to North Carolina where you wanted to volunteer your time, is that correct? Right, yeah. Okay, where did you volunteer your time? How did you serve the community, the native, or your tribe during that time? Tell us some of the things that you did to serve the tribe. I was elected to be a, a, count, a tribal council member. And that, that involved all of the work and the Indian tri tribal work between the Lumbees and all the Lumbees at that time was building an Indian uh, complex down there for, for their residents, mm -hmm. the tribal members. And so I was part of that program there. And then I was elected to be on the council in, 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 in Raleigh to get a commission in Indian affairs on, up there. And I accepted that. And so we were there when they were building the... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the tribal membership comp residential complex is like they have in Cherokee. So it's that like, was here, or was that in uh, Lumbee? Because I know earlier no, on you they, stated that, that there was, was a, this was I was because don't forget I was on the Commission of Indian Affairs underneath Gregory, but Mr. Jones at that time was was the head of it, Gregory. He succeeded Jones. Gregory is actually a first cousin of mine, uh, Uncle Jesse's, uh, which was the vice chief of the Hollywood Supporting Indian tribe. 
so Gregory's father was the was vice, the vice which is Uncle Jesse, uh, right. your Uncle Jesse, was the vice chief of the Halosaponia right. Indian tribe. Right. What position did Gregory serve? Gregory served underneath uh, 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 the uh, Commission of Indian Affairs head, Mr. Jones. The director. Which was okay. a Lumbee Indian. Okay. And so when Mr. Jones retired, Gregory Richardson, my cousin, he was, he was the next one in line to took that, and he was appointed to be the Commissioner of Indian Affairs. Okay, he's, so he's the Director of Commission of he Indian still Affairs is at for the state, state of North Carolina. Above this. Okay, so tell us a little bit more how your position in the Commission, as a member of the Commission of Indian Affairs, helped the Halawa Saponi and the Native American people uh, in the different counties. Well, I w at, the, at that period of time that I served in there, which was not a full term, because at that time for me to go to go go back to California, uh, my my tenure here was for volunteering for a year for my tribe was come to a conclusion just around 1985. So 1984 and most of 85, because I came in here around June of 1984, July of 1984, and I went back in the, in the latter part of, uh, uh, of 1985. Okay, so let's stop there, because my question is, what did you accomplish during the time you served as a member of the Commission of Indian Affairs? What did you help accomplish? It, it would be, was, uh, what was accomplished for the most part is, is the commission at that time was focusing on the Lumbee uh, low income housing project. And uh, at that time, uh, we, uh, they were trying to use Native American surveyors. But at that time, they, they had a little difference and then they hired uh, a local uh, surveyor over there. But anyway, uh, that complex was there and uh, we just got together making certain things and, and uh, approving uh, the contractors' contracts and things like that. Okay. Because outside of them, that was the most part of the Commission of Indian Affairs functioning then. Did you do any projects here in the community of the Halawa Saponi within your own community? Like the library building, was that built? When was that built? Was the housing that was built over here? Did yeah. you have anything to do with that? Right, yes. Now, our general purpose building, which, is, which was originally front uh, for a library, I was, I was part of the people that went down to Georgia and bought all the material, the framing for that building, which is where the building is probably a, a 40 foot wide and about 50 foot deep commonly known in the community as the library or general purpose building. And, uh, and that now the back part of that is the graveyard back in there. So uh, I, was, I was here doing the construction and then helped to pour the concrete and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and assemble the building there. And, uh, so, and then at the same time, as a, being an electrician and a lineman and stuff, I had my own truck, I had it down here, and I, for the f first year of uh, uh, 1985, I used my truck to do all the wiring for, for the powwow of 1985. And uh, so those are the, some of the things that I was involved in. Plus, uh, to these meetings I had to be at, from Raleigh to, to, to Lumberton and, and there, has kept, us, kept me quite busy. And uh, that's about that there. I served, served, serving in the community, going to the meetings, and travel meetings and stuff like that for the year, and then getting set, settled down in my residence and making, making my decision whether I was going to go back to Los Angeles permanently, and, and it worked out that I went back permanently uh, for another 25 years until I retired. Yeah. So, uh, so in other words, 20 some odd years probably. Okay. So, um, what are some of the other things that you found very interesting while you were working during the Commission of Indian Affairs? I think one of the things that uh, I, I've carried with me for years that impulsively, while I'm in the, in the Commission of Indian Affairs in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, at that particular time, uh, we were voting on some international things and stuff like that, and they had 
on the, this to, to, uh, to identify your ethnic group, it had Philippine, it had different white, black, or you know, whatever on it. But down there, uh, it did not have anything about Native Americans. So I had to, I had to write in down there, down there to vote. And then, when because uh, it had other on there, and then I had put Native American, how I was supporting the Indian tribe after this. And so, when I'm on the Commission of Indian Affairs up there, the one that was the, the chairman, I raised my hand and he ignored me a couple of times because I was bringing up some issues. So then I stood up and I was, I was f full of it and I sounded up. I make a, a, I make a, a, I make a, a motion. A motion that we change the name of the North Carolina Commission of Indian Affairs to the Commission of Others. <laughs> because we entered and I fungled out that. And then, in the next year, because everything that goes on there is all recorded, mm -hmm. and so the next year or so, bless it all, <laughs> Native, uh, the Native Americans, you know, let's say, but so, uh, so these are the little bitty pieces. I'll take the credit for it because I did it, but I don't know what that went on, but I do know that, and the next time I saw one on there, uh, it was a uh, Native American on there was, as, uh, you know. Was that is very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I'm glad that that's something that stuck out to you. Okay, so we're going to continue on. After you uh, did your term at the Commission of India Affairs and being um, a member of the Tribal Council, you left back to California to be with your family. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then did you return back to North? Well, I know you're in North Carolina now, but... <laughs> What year did you return back to North Carolina and just kind of pick up from there? Let us know, you know. Yeah, after my, my wife of 54 years, the mother of all my children, mm -hmm. she passed away on uh, the uh, 17th day of uh, December of uh, 2009. When did you return back to North Carolina? Oh, uh, since you're speaking in uh, Valentine's Day 2011. And, uh, of course, now I'm remarried to Livonia Richardson, which is the tribal member, and she part, was part of all of the uh, putting together and being recognized as an Indian tribe. So, uh, when married her, then I began to learn more from her about everything else that, and be fully in, involved with it. So now I'm married to one that was here Excellent. and she was born on the uh, in uh, April the 8th in uh, 1930 which is where we're about one year different so she okay. went through the whole thing there's where I got a lot of my information from and here to to tribal affairs okay so how did you serve your community once you returned back to North Carolina did you serve your community well, no, not in any, any capacity because the younger group had taken over and uh, soon after I came back, uh, Uncle Jesse uh, uh, and them, they were not a vice uh, chief anymore and uh, Chief W.R. Richardson already passed away and so uh, the, uh, the new, the new um, tribal members and had elected new uh, ch chiefs and everything else. Uh, didn't so, you serve as a... Cha on the Chamber of Commerce? Well, that, that was independent from anything to do with Indian business. That was entirely different. It was strictly a community thing, nothing to do with travel affairs, anything. So how did you serve and as a uh, on the... It was uh, just something that uh, one of the members, and he's a Lumbee, and he has an insurance agency here right there in Essex. And uh, so uh, that there it, it has... Uh, uh, no significance whatsoever with tribal formations or anything like that. And uh, what I did, I don't think that this more or less self-involvement in the community it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, to for the com community of Halawasaponi Indian tribe.